Greetings. Today is Tuesday, June 4, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In today's video, I would like to provide an update on the Central American Gyre, which is forecasted to develop over the next few days in Central America. This atmospheric phenomenon typically develops in the early summer months and is influenced by the geography of Central America and the waters of the Caribbean Sea and the Eastern Pacific, as well as the Central America monsoon trough, which typically develops in summer in this region. Projections indicate that a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation will be moving over the Eastern Pacific and the Caribbean Sea, aiding the formation of this Central American gyre. Today we have observed an increase in thunderstorm and rainfall activity over Central America, which corresponds to the approaching favorable phase of the MJO. Over the next few weeks, we will be closely monitoring the waters west of Central America, Southern Mexico, the Western Caribbean Sea, and the central and southern Gulf of Mexico. Projections indicate that low-pressure systems may form in these areas, some of which may have marginally favorable conditions for the development of one or more cyclones. Although the hurricane season began on May 15 in the eastern Pacific and June 1 in the Atlantic region, we have yet to see the formation of the first tropical cyclone. Historically, the first tropical cyclone in the Atlantic forms around June 11 on average. Even though this hurricane season is projected to be hyperactive, it has not started yet. There is no established relationship between the early formation of tropical systems and an active season. So even though the hurricane season has not started and there have been early storms in previous seasons, it does not mean this season will be less active. As we have discussed over the past months and weeks, the Atlantic will be very favorable, and we anticipate one of the most active seasons in history. Let's take advantage of this temporary calm because the coming months are expected to be very active if the experts' projections hold true. Studying the climatology a bit, wind shear remains quite strong at the beginning of June, especially in the Western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, where we usually see the formation of the first cyclone of the season. However, as we approach mid to late June, you can see in this graph how wind shear dramatically decreases. It is very likely that we will begin to see the formation of the first cyclones in the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific in a matter of days or weeks. In this following graph, in red, you can see that wind shear is still above normal over the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea. However, significant changes are expected in the coming days and weeks. For example, the projection for the third week of June shows wind shear below normal, depicted in blue. This dramatic change in wind shear anomalies is mainly due to the arrival of a favorable phase of the MJO, which helps reduce wind shear in the Caribbean and the Atlantic. Later I will show some animations of the MJO and what the models indicate in terms of the possible development of one or more cyclones over the next two to three weeks. But first, I would like to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay informed over the next few weeks. If you are on YouTube, go to the bottom of the video and click the red subscribe button, then click the bell to receive notifications when we record new videos. Additionally, if you wish to support the Hurricane Info Project, I invite you to check out the sponsorship plan at the end of the video to consider it and receive some additional benefits. Let's move on to the next image, which shows high-altitude wind anomalies, in green and blue indicating divergent winds at high levels, which are associated with increased precipitation and low pressures. Over the next few weeks, it is anticipated that Central America, the Caribbean, and the Eastern Pacific will experience precipitation and low-pressure anomalies due to a favorable phase of the MJO moving through the region. This favorable phase is expected to persist for at least the next 10 days, which will help develop a Central American gyre. The formation of this Central American gyre can be clearly seen in medium and long-term projections from the GFS model, which shows a broad rotation over Central America persisting until at least the end of June. When this phenomenon occurs, it is common to see the formation of multiple low-pressure systems. In some cases, we have observed the development of several cyclones, some in the Atlantic region and others in the Eastern Pacific. Thus, the next few weeks will be quite interesting. The formation of this Central American gyre, thanks to the favorable MJO phase, also aligns well with regions where we typically see the development of tropical cyclones in mid-June. Historically, areas east of the Yucatan Peninsula, the Gulf of Mexico, and waters south of Mexico are where we see the development of tropical depressions during the early weeks of the hurricane season. The NOAA Climate Prediction Center has marked this area as a region of interest for possible cyclonic development from June 12 to 18, and even extending until the end of June. The marked areas in red indicate favorable conditions for the formation of a tropical system. This area coincides very well with climatology, so it is important for residents of Central America. The Yucatan Peninsula, Southern Mexico, and the Gulf Coast states of the United States to stay alert in case a cyclone develops in the coming weeks. At present and in the short term, no area has been marked as a region of interest for cyclonic development, so there is no imminent risk. However, at Hurricane Info, I will continue to monitor forecast changes. 
Briefly looking at global model projections for instance, in the latest run, the GFS model develops a strong low-pressure system south of Chiapas in about 4-5 to five days. It also shows another low-pressure system forming east of Yucatan and moving over Gulf of Mexico waters in the long term. However, the GFS model is not consistent with this possible development, which is typical for long-term forecasts and developments related to the Central American gyre. Hence, we cannot yet determine with certainty whether cyclones will form, let alone predict their trajectories. For example, the German model has shown the development of the first cyclone of the season in the Eastern Pacific in recent runs. Again, there is much uncertainty, and we cannot yet discuss development probabilities or possible trajectories. The next days and weeks will be quite uncertain. For instance, the GFS ensemble members show the development of several low-pressure systems, but there is no consensus on where a system with development potential might consolidate. Clearly, the southern Mexican states, specifically in the Bay of Campeche and the region east of the Yucatan Peninsula, should be monitored over the next 7 to 10 days. The European model ensemble also highlights these areas where low-pressure systems could develop. I wanted to let you know that it is important for residents of Central America and Southern Mexico to stay alert to the possibility of significant rainfall events over the next two weeks, as flooding is likely across the region. Well, with this, I bid you farewell, but not without first inviting you to consider supporting my project by clicking the blue button at the bottom of the video that says join. There, you will find different sponsorship alternatives for Hurricane Info, where a small monthly contribution can help this project and provide you with additional benefits. Continue tuning in to Hurricane Info over the coming days for new updates. Until the next video, I hope you all have an excellent week.